Hello, it's Duncan. Last episode we tested our way to code that passes the tests for the checkout cutter. But the cutter isn't about writing the code, it's about finding what design will best support its modification and extension in the future. So today we'll refactor the simplest thing that could possibly work to give a solution that isn't completely tied to the test data, ending up with a nice abstraction using functions rather than classes. Well, it would return... Oh, that. Excellent. Thank you, the AI. So then, here's the definition of the checkout cutter. We're implementing code for a checkout system that handles pricing schemes such as apples cost 50 cents, three apples cost £1.30. And the carter gives us a definition of the prices in this table here. Now we've got that working in this code on the right, and the tests are in the code on the left here. And you can see the tests show the discount because two A's is 100, but three A's is only 130. Now there are some problems with that code. One is, for example, that I see that this var could actually be a vowel. Another is that both of these properties are mutable and public, so anyone can come along from outside our checkout and set a total that didn't really respond to the codes. And finally, if we're nitpicking, I think we could just inline that and that and that and that. But the really fundamental problem, the way that we're not meeting the specification, is that this code doesn't have enough flexibility. If the pricing rules change, which in reality, of course, they do every week in a real supermarket, then we have to get a computer programmer in to change these numbers. And the same thing is true if we want to start stocking a different type of item. So in these situations, what we want to do is go from functions that programmers are creating, like these ones, to data that can be passed into the program that represents calling those functions. So then, maybe we're done with the test for now. We'll keep on running them, but I don't think we need to see them. And here's a way to look at this. At the moment, we're applying four functions to update the total. What if we could make a list of those four functions and separate them so that we knew what they were before we called them? What do I mean by that? Well, I wonder if I could just put a lambda around each one of these things and immediately call it. Now, you can see IntelliJ is telling me this is wasted code, but you know, yeah, I'm not sure it is. I think that code is required. And in fact, if I comment one of them out, then I test fail. So these lambdas are doing something. We're creating them and then invoking them. So what was the point of that? Well, I think if we remove these invocations and then take these lambdas, I'm just going to copy them for now and put the invocations back so we have running code. And then I'm going to say val functions equals list of those lambdas. And we'll put in the commas and see whether IntelliJ understands. What's the type? Yes, it's a list of function that takes nothing and returns int, which is what we want. So now those functions have a life of their own, we should be able to iterate over them. So we can say functions for each total plus it. Oh, IntelliJ completed that for us. And what we're actually saying is it dot invoke effectively in here. So we're saying go through each one of these functions and invoke it and bring back the total. So it probably means that we can delete that. Oh, there we go. And now, crucially, these functions can be taken out of here and sort of given a life. We'll just put them at the top level for now. They're obviously private. We don't want anyone to mess around with them. And now in scan, instead of setting the total to zero and then adding to it in this for each loop, I think we could say total equals. And the way I sort of think about this is it's functions dot sum of it dot invoke. Ah, well, the AI has it. So some of it's saying run this code, get its result, and sum up all of those for every function. Is that right? Good. Now the functions we're calling in this lambda, this discounted price for and undiscounted price for, are methods. So this lambda is saying when you invoke me, I'm going to call this method, and most of the information it needs, this A, 50, 20, and 3, is going to be supplied as parameters. But some of the information it needs these codes will be fetched from the checkout. What I'd like to be able to do is have these as pure functions at the top level, and I think I might be able to refactor into that. So if I say move this to the top level, I get to this thing where the checkout is passed into the function. And I'll do the same thing here. There we go. And now you can see this lambda has to pass the checkout into this function. But the effect is the same. Just kind of tidy before we go on. Let's move that up there. And I'm going to at least put this on its own line and these on their separate lines. 
just see it all on one screen. Now our next problem is that in order to build this list of lambdas, we need to be inside checkout because checkout needs this to pass into the lambda. Ideally, we'd move this code outside the checkout. So we'd take it from here and it would live sort of at the top level like that. And I think you can see then that we'd actually pass it as a constructor parameter to checkout. But we can't do that because of this, which when we move it to the top level, doesn't refer to anything. So let's refactor to get there. We'll go back here. And now we're going to ask ourselves, if I did move the functions out, when is this available? And the answer is, well, it's available when we do this it.invoke. So these functions could be a list of functions that take a checkout. And then that would compile. And interestingly, the whole thing does compile and run at this point because each one of these lambdas has a checkout parameter that we're just discarding. It would be, it's a checkout, which would end up in there. So now I think I can take this thing and move it out of checkout. Ooh. Right, for the next thing, we want to remove this boilerplate here that's creating the lambdas. I've tried to find a nice refactor for this, but I really haven't found one. What I want to do is say that instead of a lambda in here, this first one would be discounted price for, and then that's not going to take the checkout. Because whatever that function does is going to return a function that is checkout to int. So I wonder whether we can make that happen. It's not even giving me the option to create that function. Um, maybe if I give it a different name, discounted price rule. Okay, that's better. Let's create that. Here it is. This is the code. This is the base price. This is the discount amount. And this is the discount per. And I guess it's saying these are all just unused. But the key thing is that it's saying that this thing should return a checkout int. Okay, so if it did, what would it return? Well, it would return, oh, that, excellent. Thank you, the AI. So what it's saying is I'll return a lambda that's the same as the lambda in here. That's good. And if it's right, it means that I can delete that one. Oh, it turns out I had two anyway. And if I run this, the code is the same. So now I think the second one I should be able to replace with discounted price rule for that. Remove the lambda altogether because now that function is returning the lambda. Good. And now because I'm lazy, I'm going to say that actually our undiscounted price for is the same as the discounted price for if the discount was zero. So let's just check that. If I replace this with discounted price for, which would take a checkout. The base price is 20. What happens if I gave a discount of zero every one item? Well, that would be the same. Brilliant. So I think I can do the same thing here. And that's just going to reduce the amount of code we've got. Zero for one item. And now, helpfully, I can get rid of that. And now that lets me remove these other lambdas with discounted price rule. Neither of these take a checkout. And we don't need the lambda either because the lambda is now inside discounted price rule. Fantastic. Now we've got these two functions, this one here, which I'll take out of there for now and put down by discounted price for. Discounted price for takes a checkout whereas discounted price rule returns the lambda that takes that checkout. Now, first of all, I don't think we actually need the checkout. We just need the list of codes. So I'm going to do that by saying, let's take this checkouts codes, making a parameter of that. And you notice now that the checkout has gone away from here, but we've had to fetch the list of codes in here. So it's going to refactor that to move that up to the top codes and it need not be a mutable list because we don't mutate it making this discounted price for a nice pure function but I'm going to go further and I'm going to say that this codes as list of string 
is really the type we want here. So I'm going to push that refactor up. Don't know a nice way to do that really. So I'm going to say this just takes a list of string. Uh, that this is then the codes that the checkout disappears. And in here, this is list of list of string. And then when we evoke it here, we can go and get the codes. Okay. And I did that so that this function here is a nice pure function. It's pure for two reasons. One, it doesn't depend on the checkout anymore, just this list of string. And secondly, it's pure in the mathematical sense in that for a given set of inputs, it will all give the same output. Now then, do we need this function at all? I think the answer probably is no. So we can inline that and things are still good. And you may have heard in my voice up here when I was making this list of list of string to int, that I was a little uncomfortable. This is a bit ugly. So I think there's something trying to get out here and that's something that's list of string to int here. We'll say refactor this and we'll say introduce type alias. Oh no, because this is K2. Okay, so anyway, at the top we'll do it ourselves. So we'll say type alias list of string to int is a price rule. And that's a function like that. And then this is price rule. And the same thing is true down here. And I suppose we could just say this is an expression body. It returns a price rule, the lambda that takes the codes and calculates the price. A little bit of light renaming. We'd call this functions, but we can see from the type now that it's a list of price rules. So I guess we can just rename this to price rules. And now we can parameterize checkout with our price rules. So we say I want to take this thing and I want to make it a field. And now we want to move that to the constructor and give it a better name, which is price rules. We seem to have an aliasing issue here, so let's rename that to rules. If I spelt it right. Good. And now I don't think this should be a default parameter here. Anyone that creates a checkout should be creating the rules themselves. So I'm going to take that out of there, find out what breaks. And in fact, I'm going to move that over there. And luckily it seems that everything calls price here. So we can just take our rules from our production code and move them into our test code. Now at this point it's complaining that it can't access discounted price rule, but I think that's fine because that's the thing that the production code is giving to its clients to allow them to create the rule that will then be given to the checkout in order that it works. So I now put the rules into there and jobs are good. This refactoring is quite a common one. We want to make code more general. We pull the specifics out from the production code, leaving behind the ability for the client code to implement it itself. So if we look in here, you can see we have very specific code in our production before, and that specificity has been moved into these rules in here because we've allowed the client code, the test in this case, to access this discount price rule itself. So, a little bit of reformatting, and I think we might be done for the day. Oh, but before we do, I can't help myself. I think this is checkout, apply, scan all codes, dot total. And that's the thing we're going to return. Making this an expression as Andre intended. I suspect that most implementations of the checkout carter end up with price rule as a class. So when we create them over here, we're creating an instance of the class and there'll be a public method on that class that takes a list of string and returns an int. But as I think I said before, if we have a class with only one public method, then it's probably just a function. And that's what we're seeing here where our price rule is just a function. So then we have separated out the rules from the checkout. That's nice. But we still have the problem that in our production code, somebody has to write the price rules as code like this and apply them to the system. I think you can probably see, though, 
that there is data in the form of A5023, B3015-2, which is really just data, that would allow us to build this list of price rules. Better still, though, I think we might be able to pass this table here as a string and produce the price rules. That would be quite cute, so I think it's what we'll do next episode. I have a new job in real life, so you'll notice that these episodes are less frequent at the moment. So why don't you subscribe and press that little bell icon to make sure you don't miss it. And finally, if you've enjoyed this, I think you'll enjoy the book that I wrote in that price called Java to Kotlin Refactoring Guidebook, details of which are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.